It's a real regime almost. Oh, hell no. They're talking about me. All I needed was one ball. The science of training. And I know you don't think it's a sport. How do you feel about sharing uh, progress pictures be right before the competition? I remember a couple of years ago, people would never do it. Now I feel I see more and more. Yeah, I mean, I think it really comes down to, you know, two two things. One, what your brand is and your social media brand, right? I and mean, if you're someone that is very open on your social media and that's what your fans expect from you, I think you need to continue with that. I mean, you look at someone like Hunter Labrada, he shares everything, every progress picture in like city light. He posts his diet every day um, and he's created a big brand around that. You know, if you've created a brand around secrecy and kind of like, you know, people like the Dorian kind of hiding in the shadows, then I think that can be beneficial as well. You know, and I think it comes down to the person and really what their state of mind is. And if posting too much and being too much in the limelight is going to be beneficial or negative for your, for your mental state. You know, I know I've gone into preps before where I've posted a lot of pictures and people be like, oh, you're, you know, you're going to get killed the show or Steve's going to beat you or this guy's going to beat you. And it gets into your head, you know, but if, if you're feeling like, Hey, I feel really good with how I look and you post the pictures and, you know, you can block out any negativity that comes in um, and just focus on the good stuff and, you know, use that as fuel and say, Hey, like I look good. I think I'm going to do good here. Um, and, and, you know, just focus on that. I think it can be very beneficial for guys, um, you know, to use that energy and feed off that energy that you're getting from your fans uh, online. Right. So it can go both ways. I mean, I've been, you know, I've done it a lot and it's been a big detriment to my prep and I've done it, you know, years where it's been a big aid to me as well. So, um, you know, this last year or so, as I've tried to, you know, be a little more active on my social media, I've definitely tried to post more progress pictures um, and give my fans a little more insight to it. Um, and it's been, you know, very beneficial in terms of growing my following. But you do have moments where you're like, ah, you know, maybe I didn't want to post that. So, you know, it's um, it's you got to find what you feel comfortable with and what you know is not going to stress you out or that you're focusing on looking at the comments too much. So it's uh, it's really, you know, each individual person kind of what your personality is. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I want to ask you, how do you feel about social media? Does, does, does it ever bother you with the comments? If, if you see a negative comment, let's say, does it ever bother you? I definitely fall victim to getting way too, you know, involved in, in the mess of the comments. I mean, especially, you know, for example, when I won New York Pro last year, there was a lot of, you know, controversy over that win. I mean, you know, the, the pictures that came out, um, you know, didn't do me a, a, you know, they did me a disservice. And even me looking at the photos when I was like, did I really, I, this was really a lot closer than I thought, you know? Um, but I know that what the pictures tell and what's in person can be very different. So, you know, but when those initial things came out and a lot of people criticized me for my win, I wanted to battle with all of them and make them understand why I won and, and, and get them to see what I saw and what the judges, but you know, anyone that's, you know, really successful in the social media world knows that that's a, a battle in futility, right? I mean, you're never going to convince everyone. Um, and you have to be confident in the decision that the judges made. And, you know, and fueling these people online that are giving the negative comments, that's all they want is they want you to bite back and they want to get a rise out of you, you know. Um, so I found just to, you know, let that negativity die and then let the, the positivity shine through has been, you know, very, very beneficial for me. And it's kind of, you know, changed my platform a lot in terms of the negative, you know, comments I've got. So, you know, it's uh, you're never going to please everyone. So there's no point in trying. Right. No, I agree with you 100 percent. Now, how do you feel about the bodybuilding rivalries? Right. So like what Nick was doing with Blessing, for example, they were, they went back and forth. Well, it was mostly Blessing that was going, with Nick, <laughs> I think. Right. But did you feel like, OK, do, do you feel like um, it's good for bodybuilding or bad for bodybuilding? I think there's a fine line. You know, I think. Um, when it's a healthy, like for example, Ta Tampa pro last year with me and Hunter, you know, there was a lot of hype between Hunter and I going into Tampa, you know, and there was kind of a rivalry, uh, you know, created there, but it was still no animosity between Hunter and I, it was very respectful, but it created a lot of excitement going into that show for the fans. And a lot of people I think tuned in to watch Ian and Hunter compete against each other. So, um, you know, I think from that perspective, it can be very helpful. You know, when I think it starts to get mud slinging. Um, you know, and the fans start to get too involved with it or that they think that there's a real beef between the athletes that isn't actually there. Um, you know, like let's say with Nick and Blessing, I, I don't think Nick and Blessing actually really dislike each other. I think they kind of created a drama online that they let swirl a little too far. And then their fans who are very passionate about supporting them got into it a little too much. Um, and then it starts to get, like I said, into just a, you know, mudslinging race. Right. So I think when it goes there, I don't think that's positive for the sport. Um, but when everyone's respectful, um, you know, and they respect the athletes, but support the athletes that they are 
fans of, um, you know, I think it can be very beneficial in creating excitement for the shows. Absolutely. Yeah, I agree. Actually, you know, the the comments from the from all these fans or whatever, the fans of the other person that comment negatively on the other person, that's what makes yeah. it. That's what gets into the people's like they flood yeah. the comments, and then you're like, what's yeah. going on? You know, that's what makes yeah. it actually way worse than the actual confrontation between the athletes. You know what I mean? Because no, just, exactly. I mean, you know, and and when like I said, you know, if it's if it keeps it. People saying, you know, I think this guy's going to win. This guy looks so much better, blah, blah, blah. It's okay. But then when they start throwing like, you know, this guy looks like a f-ing fat turd or whatever, you know, blah, 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 buddy, this, or this guy's a f-ing loser or whatever. When it starts to get negative like that, um, I think then that's just doing nothing for the sport, you know? Uh, but when we keep it competitive and we keep it respectful, um, like it was with Hunter and I, I think it can create a lot of really, really good excitement for a show. So. Um, you know, and then it's that same thing traveled into the Olympia. I mean, because Hunter beat me in Tampa there, you know, obviously then it creates the storyline of that rivalry now going into the Olympia and me having my chance at redemption with Hunter. So, you know, I think these storylines can be very beneficial if they're managed correctly. Um, but if they get a little too out of hand, you know, it can still be beneficial when they're, you know, it's like that old saying, no press is bad press. It's like, okay, yeah, it's, it's still attention to it. But, um, I think that there's a level of bad attention that, is not necessarily positive for the sport as a whole. Yeah, I agree with you, but I, I, I'm, I'm wondering how to control that. Like, basically, would you have to then tell your followers, guys, you know, like, keep, like, how do you how do you control some of these things? You know, because people just go in and say, yeah, I mean, sometimes it's an ine- ine- inevitability based off the you know the athlete and who their fans are and stuff like that. You know, obviously, I think you know the onus is on the athlete a little bit to get in there, you know, and and, and just say like, hey, guys, like. You know, let's keep this respectful and, you know, stuff like that. And, and I think when people see that the athletes aren't enjoying that kind of um, that kind of commentary, I think people start to chill out on it a little bit. Um, you know, and same thing, like, you know, even with the me and Hunter thing last year, you know, it, if I would get any negative comments or people that were saying even negative things about Hunter on my wall, I'd go in there and be like, yo, this isn't necessary. You know, even if it was things supporting me, but like really putting down Hunter in a negative way, I would just go call me like, hey, man, I appreciate the support, but like that's really not necessary to – you know, do this kind of, you know, this kind of talk. So let's keep it all respectful here. People would be like, oh, man, sorry. Like, let's just support you, you know, and then they'd change their tone. So, um, you know, I think people really follow suit of how the athletes conduct themselves um, and they try and mimic that. So if the athletes are being, you know, aggressive and kind of mudslinging, like I said, then I think the fans will follow suit. And I think if the athletes are being respectful and positive, I think the fans will generally follow suit with that as well. There's obviously always going to be outliers. Um, but, I mean, you do the best you can to control that and just block out the negativity. And like I said before, the positivity generally shines through, yeah.